All right, now for something completely different. This is my uh, response to Mickey Babylon's kind of fantasy booking game, where you take 12 heavyweights, eight tag teams, eight junior heavyweights, or light heavyweights as I'm calling them, uh, 10 non-wrestling non personalities, and then, you know, your essentials, your commentators and such. Uh, and then, oh yeah, gimmick characters who would be basically only TV wrestlers. All right, first, uh, my heavyweights, I would have uh, CM Punk, uh, current CM Punk. I was kind of my heel, uh, antichrist of pro wrestling, whatever you want to call him. Uh, he hates Steve Austin, who's his main enemy, and uh, yeah, he's straight edge, obviously. And we have Bret Hart, uh, 1996, obviously he's a face, uh, best wrestler in the heavyweight division, pound for pound, wrestler in the company, possibly, and a rival of Shawn Michaels. And then we have Rob Van Dam, 1998, uh, face, obviously. Uh, he, even if he was a heel, he'd be over as a face, not too long. Uh, the whole fucking show, uh, in 98, that because that was kind of the beginning of his prime. All right, then uh, Shinsuke Nakamura of Japan uh, from 2010, because that's my favorite year then. Uh, he'd obviously be a heel, and uh, yeah, he lets his body do the talking. They ain't broke, no fixing. All right, then we got Undertaker of 2006. You might say, well, that's kind of old. And, yeah. That's uh, when he was the like locker room leader and he was still active all the time. And he's not going to be a long-term wrestler. He's going to be a guy that puts people over. He'll win and win. And then he'll put guys over at big shows and stuff. So I think it's kind of a good idea. Kind of a genius idea. All right, and Shawn Michaels of 2005, 2006-ish. Uh, definitely a heel. Uh, an absolute total prick. Just, uh, yeah, he's obviously a great wrestler, so he can back up his talk, and uh, he doesn't like Bret Hart either. All right, then we have 1991 Mr. Perfect uh, Heel. Uh, yeah, absolutely perfect. Uh, he would take, uh, kind of, he would kind of take on like, anyone, heel or face, but his main guys, his main, uh, Kind of rivals would be like Bret Hart and Tyler Black. Who is my next wrestler? Tyler Black of 2010, 2011, whatever. Uh, he would be kind of my uh, future guy. He'd be, I think I'd have him compete. Like he was kind of in 2007. Have him compete with the big boys. Almost get the win, but not quite. And then finally win. And get a world title. And yeah. Maybe he wouldn't. Wait as long as ROH, but maybe I'd wait longer. All right, then we got Nigel McGuinness, uh, 2007 heel. Uh, he was the best, best in the world, so 2007-2008. And that's obviously why I won. Uh, then we have Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's our big, like, I don't know, I guess you want to say face of the company, like the main uh, good guy. Definitely the anti-hero, same Stone Cold as before, 1999. 98 Stone Cold, and uh, then we have Brock Lesnar, Monster Heel, and World Champion, and yeah, enough said. Then we have Kurt Angle, the last member of the roster, 2002-2003, a face, uh, you know, you could feud with anyone, like Brock Lesnar, but yeah, it would just be great. Alright, then we have the tag teams, Chris Hero, Claudio Castagnoli, the Kings of Wrestling, uh, obviously heels. I may have Hawk and Animal, the Road Warriors, faces, but they're more like tweeners. Then we have Giant Bernard and Carl Anderson, Bad Intentions, they'd be heel. Uh, and you have Dynamite Kid and Davy Boy Smith, which is the British Bulldogs, 90, 1984, 1985, they'd be faces. Steiner Brothers, faces, 94. Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard, the Brain Busters, 1987, uh, heels, for sure. And then Has uh, Hiroshi Hase and Kijimoto, 1992, uh, faces. And then finally, to round out the tag teams, Holy Demon Army, Toshiki Kuwata, and Akira Tawe, 95, heels. The, the Japanese things, it'll make much sense later. 
All right, then we have uh, the light heavyweight division. Chris Jericho, 2010, best in the world at what he does. A heel, only he's a light heavyweight, which in my kind of world is equal to heavyweight, but just smaller in stature. Uh, yeah, I think, I don't know who would be my champion, maybe Jericho, so he could brag more. Uh, then we have Juice and Thunder Liger, 1994, and then, yeah, 94 probably. Uh, face, be a huge junior star, put over the international thing. Yeah. All right, then uh, Chris Benoit, 96, that uh, heel. And uh, I'd probably have a few with Liger. Yeah. And then we have Eddie Guerrero, uh, the same Eddie that feuded with Ray in 97. And I would recreate or innovate that same feud. Uh, Ray Mysterio Jr., he'd be the big, like, seller, the mask and everything. Uh, plus, he's pretty much the most dynamic name in the world in 97, like any sport, like entertainment. All right, then we have Daniel Bryan, 2011, the current Daniel Bryan. Uh, he'd be a face, of course. And eventually, I'd have him be the face of the light heavyweight division, like the main guy, the number one, but not right away. And then we have Owen Hart, 94 heel. I think he could be heel or face. He could switch over time. You know, not within like two months or a year or two. Uh, I want the same Owen that was feuding with Bret Hart in 94. All right, then we have Austin Aries of 2009, the greatest man that ever lived, the greatest heel in the world at that time. Basically, him and Jericho and Nigel. Yeah, pretty obvious reasons, and uh, that's my light heavyweight division. Then we have our uh, ten non-wrestling personalities. My commissioner would be William Regal. Uh, briefly, he was the general manager. Like he was a commissioner longer, but he's a general manager in WWE, and he was the best heel in the company. And I've never heard real life heat that much as much as I heard that raw. So obviously good. Vicky Guerrero doesn't have shit on him. All right, then we have Roddy Piper. He be host the Piper's Pit, and uh, you want a guy who can sell pay-per-views and get people in, in arguments and confrontations. No brainer. All right, then we have my kind of ace up my sleeve, sweet and sour Larry Sweeney. Uh, this would be any from any time he was a manager. He would have Hero Castagnoli and. Mr. Perfect and Sarah Del Rey in his uh, Sweet and Sour Incorporated uh, group. And yeah, so obviously Del Rey. She wouldn't really wrestle, she just kind of interfered. That sort of thing. Look intimidating. And then we have Armando Estrada, a manager and translator for Holy Demon Army and Nakamura. Definitely a shyster of a guy. Yeah. Uh, then we have Jim Cornette, uh, I just happen to be the crazy old guy who rants on things every week, similar to what he used to do on Raw. <sighs> yeah, people would like it. Definitely feel the smart fans. All right, then uh, also Stacy Keebler, Nigel McGinnis Ballet. It suits him. Uh, and Tom Young and Paul Taylor is my referees. All right, then uh, my four, I don't know, my free ones, I guess. Uh, play by play, Jim Ross, Color Man, Bobby the Brain Ian, Ring announcer, Howard Finkel, and backstage interviewer, Jesse the Body Ventura, all in 1986. Um, he was just really good at that shit. You can't help the Hogan Andre thing. Yeah, larger than life guy. Uh, yeah, I'd have to have Brain though, because I'm a comedy fan, so Brain has to be the Color Man. But that doesn't mean that Jesse Ventura is not involved. So, backstage interview. All right, and my gimmick characters, pretty much TV guys would be Cole Cabana, Ben Scudino, and The Miz and Zack Ryder. Yeah, these guys are just they're, they're good and they're really good at what they do. So, yeah. I mean, Colt can be a main eventer at times, but I like him better in his comedy role. Other guys can do the serious stuff. Alright, um, I, I guess I'll make a, a plug myself on Twitter, alsleet777, uh, lowercase uh, letters, obviously. Not obvious, but it's, uh, some of you may know, 
who else he was. But I mean, either way, it's a great name. Okay, that's then the uh, end of the video, and uh, yeah, subscribe to Mickey Babylon. Good night, good luck, good everything else.